In this video, we're going to learn how to transform parabolas, and we're going to use a really great graphing tool called Desmos. And what's so great about this is you can just type in the equation and it will draw it for you straight away. Now, there are three types of transformations that we usually perform on any parabola, and I'm going to show you how to do the three of them. They are changing the width of the parabola, reflecting the parabola over the x axis. And finally, translations, which are all about moving the parabola left, right, up, or down. Now, I need to point out that the transformations we're looking at in this video are based on the basic quadratic function y equals ax squared. Some of the properties I teach you in this video will not actually apply to more complex quadratic functions. But you don't really need to worry about that since the standard mathematics course does not really delve into complex functions. So moving on to our first transformation, we're going to talk about changing the width of the parabola. So I'll bring up Desmos here and we'll write our very basic parabola y equals x squared, like so. And let's talk about changing the width of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a value in front of x squared. This is our a value. So let's try 2x squared. This is our blue graph. Notice that our parabola became thinner. So by observing this, I reckon that if I make the number bigger in front of x squared, it's going to make it thinner. So let's test that. Let's try 5x squared. Remembering I don't have to put y equals at the front all the time. And when I do that, I get my green graph, which is thinner again. So what if I try a really large number? Let's try this really large number, then x squared. And you'll see that it's so thin, it, it looks like a stick. If I was to zoom in on that, I could probably see that parabola shape again. So I'm going to go back to my slide, and I'm going to write a little note to myself. Remembering that a is the number in front of x squared. So as this value increases in magnitude, as a increases in magnitude, we notice that the parabola becomes thinner. The next question we're going to ask ourselves is, what happens as a decreases? We know it becomes thinner as it increases. So I reckon as it decreases, it's going to become wider. And when we talk about decreasing, we meaning it's approaching zero, becoming really small, becoming a decimal. So we'll bring up Desmos, and let's try a decimal such as 0.5x to the power of 2. This time we get our black graph, and we can see it's become wider. Let's try an even smaller decimal, something even closer to zero. 0.1x to the power of 2. And you can see it's become much wider now. In fact, I'd like to see what happens when I have an extremely small number, like this one here, x to the power of 2. And you can see that it's so wide, it's almost made a flat line. Now, if I was to zoom out on this, eventually I would see that parabolic shape coming back. So I'd like to make a little note down here. What happens as a decreases? Or approaches zero and we'll say that the parabola becomes wider and I have a picture here that we can see where when we have large numbers of a we get really thin parabolas and when we have really small numbers for a we get our really wide parabolas let's move on to our next transformation which is a reflection so we're going to learn how to reflect the parabola over the x-axis. So bringing up Desmos, if I want to reflect this parabola over the x-axis, it's really easy. I just take the exact same equation and I put a minus sign out the front of it. Now let's try this for a different parabola. Let's try it for the parabola y equals 0.2 x squared. If I take that exact same equation and put the minus sign out the front of a in front of 0 
you'll see that our black graph is a reflection of our purple graph over the x-axis. Now I want to point out that we don't do reflections over the y-axis and the reason for that is it doesn't change anything. If I look at my red graph here, if I was to reflect it over the y-axis, it would look exactly the same. So we only worry about reflecting it over the x-axis. So we go back to our notes here. It says what happens when A is negative, meaning we're putting a minus sign in front of the A. And we'll say that it reflects our parabola over the x-axis. Now I have some images here of some parabolas that have a negative A value. And you'll notice that <clears throat> whenever A is negative, your parabola is a downward facing parabola. So we'd also like to make a note about that. The next question we're asked is why don't we reflect the parabola over the y-axis? And I mentioned before, if I've got a parabola and I reflect it over the y-axis, it's just going to look the same. There are situations where reflecting over the y-axis causes a parabola that's different, but that's more for the advanced math students. We're not going to worry about those. So we'll look at our third and final transformation, which is our translation. How do you move the parabola left, right, up, and down? So we'll bring up Desmos again, and we've got our basic parabola y equals x squared. And all I need to do is copy this equation, and I'm going to add 4 at the end of it. And what you'll notice is that our parabola has moved up four places. So how do you think we could possibly move it down three places? Well, if we take the same parabola and subtract 3 at the end, we can see it's moved our parabola down three places. So let's make a little note about that. First of all, here's an image of what we've just done. So we'll say that when we add a number at the end of our equation, it moves our parabola up. And when we subtract a number, it moves or translates our parabola down. So let's look at our sideways movements, our left and right movements now. How are we going to do that? I'm going to take the same equation and I'm going to put my x in brackets. All right, And I want to see what happens when I add 4 to it. And we can see that when we add 4, it moves our parabola 4 places to the left. All right, this time I want to do the same thing, and I want to put minus 3 next to x inside of brackets. And you'll see when we do that, it moves our parabola three places to the right. So subtraction moves it to the right, and addition moves it to the left. Let's make a note about that now. So we'll say that by first putting x in brackets, adding a number moves it left, and subtracting a number moves or translates it to the right. And we can see that on our image here, where we added 4, it moved it 4 places to the left, and when we subtracted 3, it moved it 3 places to the right. Anyway, that concludes our video on the transformation of parabolas. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.